In this video, we're going to talk about unit vectors. Unit vectors are vectors that have two characteristics. They are dimensionless, they don't have any units, and they have a magnitude of one. And every vector that has these characteristics is a unit vector. Now there are some books when they talk about unit vectors imply that a unit vector has to point along a certain axis or something like that. That's not right. <laughs> this isn't one of those times where, oh, different books have different interpretations. If they say that, they're wrong. A unit vector is this and only this. It's dimensionless and has a magnitude of one. Let's take a look at a unit vector. Here I have a regular vector, a, written in descriptive notation. It may have some magnitude a and some units pointing in some direction. So for example, here is a vector with a magnitude of 5 meters pointing 37 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Now if you think about it, I can rewrite that as the product of a scalar times a vector. A scalar has a value and can have units, so let that scalar be 5 meters. Then the vector would be 1, without dimension, pointing in the same direction as the original vector. That is the unit vector. We identify unit vectors by putting that symbol above them, which we call hats. So this would be called a hat. And so the vector a can be written as the magnitude of a times the unit vector of a, a hat. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Here I have a graph, and I have drawn the vector a. It has a magnitude of 5 meters, it's 37 degrees, counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, which means the tip of A is at an x value of 4 and a y value of 3. So let's zoom in. Now you see that I've drawn the unit vector A hat. A hat is still a vector. It has all the other characteristics of a vector. It has a magnitude and a direction. It's just that its magnitude is 1. It goes from 0 out to 0.8 along the x-axis and 0.6 along the y. Now remember, it doesn't have units, so putting it together with the original vector can be a little sketchy, but the original vector could have units of meters per second or newtons or something not associated with length. But we draw it on these graphs anyway to indicate its direction. And so the unit vector is just a vector pointing in the direction of the original vector. Let's see how to calculate that. I've now written that vector in the ordered set notation. The point on the end is at 4 and 3 and has units of meters, so I represent it as the ordered pair 4 meters, 3 meters, and it has a magnitude of 5 meters. Now, if so if I take this equation and divide both sides by the magnitude, I get a formula for calculating the unit vector. You can calculate any unit vector by simply taking the original vector and dividing by the magnitude. So in this case, the original vector is 4 meters, 3 meters, in ordered set notation, divide by 5 meters, and that's the same as multiplication by a scalar of 1 over 5 meters, and so to do that, you have to do that operation to both of the components. So we divide both components by 5 meters, 4 divided by 5 is 0.8 and the meters cancel, 3 divided by 5 is 0.6 and the meters cancel, and so we get a vector of the ordered pair 0.8 and 0.6. It's without dimension and a magnitude of 1. This is the unit vector for the original vector. Just briefly, another example. Here I have a vector defined by 1, negative 4, and 2. It's in three dimensions. I can calculate the magnitude of that, which is the square root of 1 squared plus 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to the square root of 21, which is about 4.58. The unit vector, then, is each component divided by the magnitude. 1 over 4.58, negative 4 over the magnitude, and then 2 divided by the magnitude. My calculator tells me that those values are 0.218, negative 0.218. 873 and 0.436. That's now the unit vector for the original vector B, a vector of magnitude 1 pointing in the same direction as that vector. And of course, you would know how to check something like that, which is to calculate the magnitude with those numbers to make sure you get the number 1. 
Finally, I want to introduce you to some very special unit vectors, the Cartesian basis vectors. The first one, which is an I, where that hat is where the dot is supposed to be, called I hat, has a magnitude 1 and it points along the positive x axis. It would have a ordered set notation that looks like this, 1, 0, 0. And then, of course, there's a j hat, which is the unit vector that points along the positive y axis. And finally, k hat, a unit vector that points along the positive z axis. If I were just working in two dimensions, I would have i hat and j hat, unit vectors that point along the positive x and y axis, respectively. Why are these important? Well, if I let a sub x be any number, it's a scalar, then that scalar times i hat will give me any vector along the x-axis. And similarly, if I take another number, a sub y, multiply it by j hat, I can get any vector along the y-axis. And a sub z k hat gives me any vector along the z-axis. And that means a linear combination of those three vectors will give me any possible vector. And that is the basis of the component form notation for vectors, which is what we use extensively for the rest of the course.